In this video, we'll solve this problem where we want to maximize an expression with mixed problem constraints. So the first inequality is with less than or equal to, and the second inequality is with greater than or equal to. The method we'll use is called the big M method. First, let's write the inequalities into equations. We'll add a flat variable f1 to the first inequality. We have 2x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 plus s1 equals 17. The reason that we can add a slack variable is because we have less than or equal to. The second inequality is different because it has greater than or equal to. So this equation becomes x1 minus 2x2 minus 2x3 since it has greater than or equal to, equal to minus s2. And this s2 is called the surplus variable. Every time we add a surplus variable into the equation, we need to add another equation is called, excuse me, add another variable that's called artificial variable, a1, then equals 1. And the subjective function will be changed to it will be changed to p equals negative 10x1 plus 10x2 plus 15x3. Here you want to minus ma1. a1 is the artificial variable we introduced earlier into the second equation. And m here consider it as a very large positive number. And the new non-negative restrictions are x1, x2, here we have x3, and the select variable is s1, and surplus variable s2, and also a1. They all need to be non-negative. So the highlighted part is the modified problem. Now we will turn this modified problem into a matrix. The variables we have are x1, x2, x3. Then we have s1, s2, a1, and p. And then don't forget, this is the augmented matrix. Okay, so the first line, first row coming from the first uh, equation. Two, three, one, one, zero, 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 and 17 here. Okay, and second row is 1, negative 2, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 1. Third row, the third row is the row with p in it. So you will have to change this equation with all the variables on one side. So moving all these terms to the left side, you have 10x1 plus uh, minus 10x2 minus 15x3 plus ma1 plus p equals 0. So let's write the last row as 10, negative 10, negative 15, and 0, 0, M, 1, 0. 
Now what we want to do is turn the M in the bottom row under the column of all your artificial variables into zero. So here we only have one artificial variable, which is A1. So we want, we want to perform a row operation and turn that M into zero. So what we'll do is multiply negative M to R2 and add it to R3 and make it the new R3. We have the first two rows do not change. We only change the third row. Negative m times r2. So negative m first times 1. We have negative m plus 10. Negative m plus 10. Now negative m times negative 2 is 2m plus negative 10 is 2m minus 10. Now negative m times negative 2 is 2m plus negative 15 is 2m minus 15. Now next, negative m times 0 is 0 plus 0, that's 0. Negative m times negative 1 that's m plus 0, that's an m. And negative 1 times negative m times 1 is negative m plus m is 0. And times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative m times 1 is negative m plus 0 is negative m. Now that we turn the bottom row of all the artificial variables into zero. Here we only have one. So we turn that into zero. We'll perform pivot operations to this matrix like what we did in the previous two sections. We'll take a look at all the indicators here. So we have these six indicators. We want to turn all the indicators into a non-negative number. Since we set m as a really large positive number, 2m minus 10 will be positive, 2m minus 15 will be positive, and m, of course, is positive. And here, negative m plus so m is a really big positive number. It will be definitely greater than 10. So this one is considered negative. So we want to turn this number into 0. That's what we want to do the next step. Because this column is the pivot column. Okay, so not only we have to turn negative m plus 10 into 0, we have to find the pivot element. And how do we decide which one is the pivot element? We make the quotient. Right? So we have 17 divided by 2 compared with 1 divided by 1. It's pretty obvious 1 divided by 1 is a smaller number. That makes this 1 the pivot element. Okay, so since that 1 is already 1, we don't have to turn it into 1. And so we will have to turn the 2 into 0 and the bottom negative m plus 10 into 0. Okay, so let's go. To turn the 2 into 0, I'm going to add negative 2 r1, r2, excuse me, to r1 to make it the new r1. To make the bottom negative m plus 10 into 0, I'm going to multiply r2 by uh, the negative of m plus 10. So m minus 10 uh, and add it to r3 and make, make it the new r3 so that the bottom element in that column will become 0. 
let's work on the first row. So negative 2 times R2, that's negative 2. And plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. Negative 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2 plus 0 is 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 0 is 0 plus 0 is 0. And negative 2 times 7, sorry, times 1 is negative 2 plus 17 is 15. Okay, we're done with R1, R2, R2 is staying the same. So I won't change any numbers. Now, let's go change R3. So M times negative M minus 10 times R2. Okay, I'm going to write M minus 10 times R2 over here just to make my life easier. So M times M minus 10 times R2 times 1 is M minus 10 times negative 2 is negative 2M plus 20. Same here. 0 here, and this is negative m plus 10, m minus 10, 0, and m minus 10 here. Okay, so now let's add m minus 10 times r2 to r3. Okay, so we have that is 0. Okay, so here we have 10, and 5, 0, 10, and minus 10, 1, and negative 10. Now we check all the indicators again. So these are the indicators. They are all positive. We can see that the basic variables we have are x1 and s1 and p, and the rest variables are non-basic variables. That means their values are zero. So that means x2, x3, and a1, they're all zeros. I'm glad to see a1 is equal to 0 here because if any artificial variable is not equal to 0, then we don't have an optimal solution. Since for this problem, we only have one artificial variable, which is A1, and it is equal to 0, and we do have an optimal, optimal uh, solution which is the maximum p is negative 10. This happens when x1 is equal to uh, 1, and s1 is equal to 15. And the, the rest variables are zeros. So our solution is maximum p is negative 10, it happens when x1 is 1, x2 is 0, and x3 is 0. And I hope this video is helpful, and I will see you in the next video.